What's up, y'all? What's up, y'all? It's your boy, First Time Reds, back with another video. Be about to watch GameCom 2020. We about to see all the new games, all the new uh, 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 trailers, gameplay today. And it's going to be a exciting video. It's going to be a exciting reaction. It's going to be good. So we probably got like two minutes, a minute left into the countdown, into the countdown, get done. And we're going to start the, the program. We're going to start the show. So I'm letting y'all know, but it's gonna be fire. You're gonna see the Larry action, but it's gonna be cold. Let's get it, man. Let's get it. I can't I'm excited. I can't wait for the new game to come out. And and it it just it's gonna be a good year, bro. It's gonna be a good year. And I feel like this game's kinda of gonna be good. It's gonna be good, it's gonna be top notch to me. I have a good feelings about this. So let's get into the video, man. Let's let's, let's get to the the stream. We got a minute and ten seconds left. Minute and five seconds left. So before they started, um, you know, before all the countdown started, it was showing Destiny 2, Outriders, uh, um, the new Star Wars game. It was showing all kind of stuff. New gameplay, we showed the Doom, uh, the, the new stuff that came with Doom. Um, just, 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 just plain uh, stuff that we already seen, but a little more deep depth into it. So, I can't wait. It's going to be fire. It's my favorite word. It's my favorite word. Fire. Fire. You gonna hear a lot of fire, you're gonna hear a lot of coals, you're gonna hear a lot of this thing is dope. You gonna hear all that man. You got twenty six seconds left. We about to get into it, bro. We about to get into it. Ooh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So let's get it. Make sure make sure all the stuff is straight. Um desktop audio, yeah, that's straight. Let me get into my chat party. Mine, mine say two minutes. What your? Mine, mine playing. You got something on the screen. Hello, Refresh is The Gamescom opening night live 2020 pre-show. All right, here we go. I'm Kyle Bossman, and this is my hot and stinky apartment. All right, let's go. I realize you probably have a lot of questions right now, like who is this guy? Not that important. Is this the show? <clears throat> no. Just to be clear, this is the pre-show. This is you and me for the next 20 minutes getting excited about opening Night Live proper. The big show. <laughs> that one is go. gonna look nice. That one's got Jeff Keighley. That one's got a budget. It's gonna be fancy looking. Not like this. And then you might be thinking, wait, is the next 20 minutes just this guy with his headband talking to me about stuff? No. It's gonna be some of that, but most of the show is trailers. We have world premiere trailers right here for the pre-show. If anything, my job is just to smile at you and fill time in between trailers. <laughs> in fact, we should, I think, start off with a trailer. We'll talk about opening night live. It's gonna be big and fun and awesome, but I feel like the best way to kick off a pre-show is just to get right into one. Our first world premiere trailer uh, is a game that was just announced earlier this year at an Inside Xbox event from Bandai Namco. This is Scarlet Nexus. Let's go, baby. World premiere. Mmm. <laughs> you have to be prepared for anything. Intruders were just detected. We have to work together. many different powers. Let's do this. You have your ways of doing things, and I have mine. Uh, let's go. This game look look nice. Look like uh what's that game off of um Nintendo's uh console? I forgot the name of it, but uh it looks like a Nintendo game. And that thing is so well too. Forgot the name of it. Something chain, extra chain, some something, something like that. Forgot the name of it. Scarlet Nexus for Xbox. World premiere. If you're just now joining us, this is the Gamescom Opening Night Live 2020 pre-show. That was a trailer for a video game and not an anime. And I'm Kyle Bossman, not important. For the next 20 minutes, less than, much less than now, we are counting down the minutes until the big show, Opening Night Live, in which you're going to get fresh looks at 
Fall Guys Season 2, Destiny 2. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War was just announced yesterday. We're mm -hmm. already getting to see more of that tonight. Lots of things to see. Sydney Goodman from IGN is going to be giving out the Gamescom Awards for Best PC Game, Best PlayStation Game, Best Xbox Game, as well as talking about some brand new shows from IGN that they are debuting this week at Gamescom. Lots of stuff in ONL. It is going to be a chunky, thick show. But in the meantime, for this pre-show, it is time now for another world premiere on our end. The game next that we're going to see is called Quantum Error. And parents, let me warn you now. It's time to put the kids to bed. Because it's about to get scary as hell in here. I don't care if you're in the Western Hemisphere and it is the afternoon. <laughs> put the kids to bed. Bottom of my footage is in work in progress. Ooh! On real engine team kill media. Let's go, please. We did it. Yeah. Shooter. <laughs> Let's get it. That artifact you recovered. Now the answer to all our questions. Uh oh. Oh. Oh, this is probably VR, huh? Is it for VR? It looks like a VR game. Look like VR. Oh, crazy. Space Quantum Era. I don't know why it looked like a VR. It could be on VR to me. It could be a nice VR game. We've got a lot more world exclusive trailers to go, more pre show to go, an interview with Jeff Keeley. Next up, we have a car <laughs> brand synonymous with racing and innovation and a key partner of Gamescom for years, Ford. They're about to exclusively reveal the first ever car made with gamers for gamers. Check it out. Ford knows racing. In 2019, we brought our love of racing to gaming and Team Fordzilla was born. And that was just the beginning. In May, we launched Project P1 to design a car in collaboration with gamers for gaming. This project was a global first and our designers let their imagination go wild. So on to our first global announcement. Please welcome our first ever Team Vorzilla Project P1 model. Mm. All right. That my little futuristic. Yeah. No. I guarantee they have a, 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 a real concept in the uh, police. And now our second. Like they, it's like a full built you got a so design in a police. With Project you know P1, that we are now committing to make a real world version of this groundbreaking. I told you. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> If I didn't have games, I think, I guess I would just be writing a lot more. Video games and writing are absolutely my two favorite passions and I just managed to combine them into a job. So I feel like, honestly, I probably would have finished a couple of books. <laughs> if there were no games, what else would I do? I mean, I'm a, I like tech, but you need to do things on the technology. And so if I can't play things, if I wasn't into gaming, yeah, it'll be a lot of TV watching. If there's out there a universe where I'm not a gamer, then I probably would start to game. I think mm. I will try something to put some smile on the face of uh, everyone. I would watch a lot more movies and read more books and get bored. 
Welcome back to the opening night live pre-show. Uh, this is only the second year of ONL existing, uh, but I think it is safe to say that this year's will be unconventional. So to tell us what to expect from the show this year, please welcome Jeff Keeley. We are now joined by uh, Jeff Keeley, host and executive producer of Opening Night Live. How are you doing, Jeff? I'm doing great, Kyle. How are you? I'm doing okay. Uh, so back in April, Gamescom said we're going digital this year. When did you start thinking about ONL and how that's going to look? Well, we knew last year we were going to do another ONL this year because it was a big success. But, yeah, we had no idea what format it was going to take. Normally, we are in Cologne. This year, we're doing it uh, from Los Angeles. But I actually, Gamescom came to me and said, we definitely want to do ONL. It's a, it's a digital event for the whole world. So even if we don't have something physically in Germany, we still want to do this show with you. And I said I was doing Summer Game Fest, and maybe we can bring all these things together to create this grand finale uh, for the show and and all summer I was really hoping to to do a show that was a little bit bigger than I've been you know, <coughs> broadcasting from home here for many months and I wanted to do something with kind of a set and a little bit of spectacle to it uh, and bring the whole industry together and that's that's what we're gonna do so is it going to be just as long as a regular show yeah we have like two hours of stuff to show folks um, from across the industry two hours you know, like Oof. The big stuff, uh, the biggest games out there like Call of Duty, and then a lot of really, uh, you know, interesting titles. Of course, we're going to have uh, some amazing next-gen stuff in the show. And uh, and Fall Guys Season 2, which uh, has, you know, become a thing over the past couple of weeks. So it's it's really fun to have, like, the big and the small and the, the, the surprises and next-gen all blended together. But, yeah, it's a, it's a full-blown show, two hours. Is it going to be just back-to-back -back trailers, or are you going to do some interviews and demos? You will definitely see trailers. You will see some extended gameplay demos um, of some titles as well. There will be a few interviews with a couple of developers. Uh, we've got some special guests. And one thing I will say kind of right out of the gate is that this is not sort of wall-to-wall -wall shock and awe announcements of new games similar to last year at Gamescom. We have some really big updates on games that fans are excited about uh, and meaningful, but you know, the kind of big surprise announcements. Uh, we have a few things in the show and, and you know, we have lots of great things planned for the Game Awards, but similar to last year, this is really a showcase of like big holiday games, games coming next year that you know about. So, you know, I, I would s tell people to set their expectations to be really meaningful updates on existing games versus blowing you away with, uh, you know, surprise shock announcements. Great. Jeff, I am personally looking forward to the show. Well, the, me too. It's it's been really fun to build this, but you know, even working with our team, it's been challenging um, to do things safely in the the era of, of COVID. And it's been it's been meant a lot to me that Gamescom has said we still want to do this show. And I think for all of us in the industry, we want that big uh, showcase. So I'm just really excited to honestly like leave home, do like uh, uh, have a set, and you'll see we've got like screens and lights, and it's it's. If we do it right, we're going to hopefully create that magic moment that we haven't felt this summer, right? And a lot of the events this summer have been pre-taped, and they've been they've been great and, and lots of cool game info, but I really wanted to do something live with a lot of energy to it. So if, if we do things right, that's what people are about to see. Very cool. Good luck with everything. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks for hosting the pre-show. I'm, I'm doing my best. <laughs> So just so we're all on the same page about what just happened, that was basically an interview with my boss using questions that I mostly already know the answers to. So considering all that, I think that went pretty well. <laughs> Next up, we do have another world premiere trailer, baby. Vroom, vroom, honk, honk for Dirt 5. Let's go. Let's see it. Dirt 5. Playgrounds. Oh yeah, boy, that looks good. That like the color scheme. Uh oh, stream lagging.
October 16th. So you think like a vampire bit a car and sucked out gas? <clears throat> to be continued. It is now time for the part of the pre-show that I've been, I've been reading your live comments. I see them right now. Everybody's blowing up, demanding Kyle's 10 reasons to be excited for opening night live. Well, let's kick it off. Reason number 10 to be excited for opening night live 2020, feeling excited for next gen again. Number nine, Jeff Keighley wardrobe reveal. Number eight, oh. reason to be excited for opening night live 2020, destiny trailers are usually pretty good. Number seven, it will mean this pre-show is finally over. Number six, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Okay, we for that. reason to be excited for opening night live 2020, pub stomper, pub stomper. Number four, Fall Guys Season 2. Number three, reason to be excited for ONL 2020. Actual gameplay from a mysterious PlayStation 5 exclusive. Ooh. Number two, everything else in my life sucks right now. And the number one reason to be excited for opening night live 2020. Jeff Keighley said it's going to be good. We have one final world premiere trailer to show off. And this trailer is an announcement of a Switch version of a popular game from 2018. That can only be described as dinosaurzy. Enjoy. You think that things are going to turn out differently, huh? Well, the ones before you did. <laughs> See, Jurassic Park. <laughs> because they believed that they were in control, and control. Well, here's the thing. Oh, okay. Humanity is desperate for it. We are seduced by it, but we never really possess it. You see, like that's crazy. I've never seen this game before. My first time seeing it. Stubborn, life will not be contained. And what makes us such unique creatures is knowing the power of what we're up against and still believing that we can win. Now, the graphics do not look good. It look like Legend, a uh, gym before that, for that PS3. So we, you know, I know it's on the twin switch. The uh, twin switch ain't that much powerful. Uh, they look that's it. That's all rigged like the other consoles. This very pre-show, please be excited come on now. for the actual opening night live in which you'll see some Destiny 2. You'll see I guess. Fall Guys Season 2. You'll see Black Ops Cold War. That mysterious PlayStation 5 demo. Oh, some things we've probably uh -oh. never heard of before. I think it's going to be a very good show. I'm personally excited about it. Me. I should thank you, actually, for putting up with my nonsense for the last 20 minutes. It is appreciated. But seriously, enjoy the show. So what's the plan? Wagon, man. Time to take control of our world. When we feel out of place, disconnected, and divided, there are always repercussions. Do we have what it takes? All right, I'm going in. To be heroes? What we're doing here could change things forever. Tonight, we bring the world together. You're with us now. We celebrate who we are. Yes. It's humanity's chance to repent. And what we are. I'm with you every step of the way. The future of gaming. Welcome to Gamescom. Opening night live. Hello, everyone. I'm Jeff Keeley, and welcome to Gamescom Opening Night Live 2020. 
Now this year, Gamescom is of course a little different than normal, and I hope all of you and your families are safe and healthy at home. <laughs> In 2020, games have comforted and connected us more than ever. And with the launch of PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X later this year, games are only going to get better. Well, all summer, I was hopeful we could get to this very moment, a big live showcase filled with more than 35 games to kick off Gamescom 2020. Tonight, you'll get a first look at Fall Guys Season 2 Let's go. and an extended gameplay like Fall Guy. of Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart for okay. PlayStation 5. Let's go. Plus, we might have a couple surprises along the way, too. All right. Before all right. we start, I want to acknowledge and thank all the game developers, marketers, and publishers who have worked under challenging circumstances to keep us entertained. This show is nothing without them or my production team, and doing a show at this scale safely is not easy, especially when all of you at home have some pretty insane expectations. I hope tonight reminds you why you love to play games. And with that, we're going to move on to our Call first game with a game Black that was Ops just Cold announced War. yesterday. Cool. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. And joining me is Dan Vondrack from Raven to tell us about the game and give you an exclusive sneak peek. Dan, how you doing? Good, Jeff. Thanks for having me here. This has uh, been a dream project for us to work on from, the, from nearly the beginning of development. We knew Black Ops Cold War was going to be a direct sequel to Black Ops 1. And we loved That's the crazy, idea though. of returning to the pillars built the Black Ops franchise. Deniable operations, conspiracy grounded in history, and that shadowy world of paranoia. And we get to mix all those together, drop the player into the 1980s at the height of the Cold War. And it's really something that we know would feel a graph mix today, look and also uniquely Black fire. Ops. Fire. Well, Fire. you start playing with Black Ops, everyone wants to know characters. We saw yesterday in the reveal Woods. trailers, you know, some familiar faces. So, you know, Woods, Mason, like, break it down. Um, how does this fit into the Black Ops can? You said it's a direct sequel, so are we going to see a lot of familiar faces? Yeah, part of the fun in making this game was bringing back the iconic characters like Woods and Hudson and Mason and seeing how all those personalities mix with some of the new characters. So the campaign takes place in 1981, and we love that we've been able to have so many connections to the original Black Ops and really be that direct sequel to the game. Uh, now, one thing that I'm I really believe is using the same engine as Modern Warfare. The storytelling in kind of a new direction. The, the Modern Warfare Call of Duty that came out last year. About how you play they use the same the engine because it looks good. That engine looked good. On Modern Warfare, this engine yeah, gonna look good. Same engine, probably just improve. You know, was to say, let's take the improve uh, little ride, things here and there. Infuse it with some player choice and some player skin. The skin texture look top notch. So that starts best as far. Best I've seen so far. Own character for the Cold War campaign. They can name them and pick a military background and really pretend they are that Black Ops soldier that they want to be. From there, we wanted to take some of our missions and infuse optional objectives, multiple paths, and some player choice moments inside some of those missions. And it was fun to find that balance between the hard driving Call of Duty action and these more nonlinear experiences, and, and these more nonlinear experiences in some, inside some of the missions. So with choice comes the player wanting to feel that impact. So some of those choices earlier in the game and some towards the end will actually shape the ending of the narrative of the campaign. All right, so multiple endings to this game. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That's, that was one of the big things for us. It's like we love that Black Ops has always been willing to take risks, and we all know they did some of this in Black Ops 2. And with our story and with these features, we love playing homage to those early Black Ops games. Oh, yeah, I remember the numbers. All right. Uh, well, Dan, uh, we are excited to see more of it. I know multiplayer reveal is coming in September, but uh, since you got a switch there, maybe you could flip the switch on something exclusive for us. Right? What, what are you going to see? Look at lag, huh? Yeah, absolutely. This is really exciting because this will be the first time we've done this outside the walls of the development studio. This is a scene from earlier in the game, and it's a critical point really it shows the narrative of the world shows this threat that our heroes are going to be battling so let's take a look this thing's lagging dude it's not it's not my it's not my in i got good internet a great internet it's just information the stream how could that too many people on now from los alamos by the russian spy known as per i known as perseus 1968 the vietnam war Viet Cong soldiers orchestrated by Perseus attempted to steal an American-made nuclear bomb from a U.S. firebase. 
Five days ago, while on a mission, we acquired intel that Perseus is in play again and planning an attack on the West. Perseus, the CIA's analysts consider him to be the single largest threat to the free world. Mr. Hudson, we're all aware of Perseus. We're also aware he's more myth than fact. I mean, personally, I think he's nothing more than the Russian <clears throat> boogeyman. General Haig, allow me to introduce the man best suited to respond to that. CIA clandestine special officer, Russell Adler. He's one of the few people who even come close to capturing Perseus. Uh, Mr. Adler, why should we take this Perseus threat seriously? You don't have to, sir. <laughs> yeah, then a lot of innocent people are gonna die. Why do you say that? Sir, every time Perseus has come into play, it's shifted the balance of the Cold War. And after 13 years of silence, if he's active, something big is gonna happen. Something that will affect the free world. Mr. President. Mr. President, this is Jason Hudson and Russell Adler. I know their names. Who do you think approved their last mission? Is the threat real? Yes, sir, we believe it is. Can you stop Perseus? We can, sir. I've already submitted the requisition for my team. Sir, their requests are highly irregular, most likely illegal. If the press gets all... What the hell are you talking about? Do you know who we are? Every mission we go on is illegal. Sergeant Woods, plausible deniability is the backbone of our work. Al, we're talking about preventing an attack on the free men and women of the world. Give Mr. Adler whatever he wants. Gentlemen, you've been given an important task, protecting our very way of life from a great evil. There is no higher duty. There is no higher honor. And while few people will know of your struggles, rest assured, the entire free world will benefit. I know you won't fail us. Tonight, we have some new game announcements for you guys as well, including this one, a new next-gen narrative action-adventure <coughs> game from Reflector Entertainment in Montreal. It's called Unknown 9. The game tells the story of Haruna, a woman raised on the streets of India and haunted by visions of her own death. Haruna struggles to understand her mysterious, innate abilities to manipulate the unseen. Check out this first look. Unknown 9. to PC and next gen consoles. Reflector. All right, let's get to the gameplay. One of this year's biggest games has been Doom Eternal. Tonight, mm -hmm. we've got an exclusive first look at the campaign expansion called The Ancient, Ancient Gods, Gods Part, Part One. One. Check this out. 
Let's see, let's see, let's see. Over premiere. Ten, twenty, twenty. Twenty twenty marks the twenty fifth anniversary of a legendary game studio, Bioware. Tonight, Casey Hudson and the team will give everyone around the world let's see what, a little taste what they got. of what's next. Casey, over to you. Hey Jeff, it's great to see you again. You know, six years ago, we were on the stage with you at the 2014 Game Awards, accepting the Game of the Year for Dragon Age Inquisition. And since then, we've been imagining new ways to use next-generation technology to bring the world and characters of Dragon Age to life. We're still in early production, but we thought it was time to give you the very first look at how Bioware's passionate team of developers are crafting this very special game. Bioware team. I've been at Bioware for a really long time, so I've got to see it grow up and turn from a from a company of 35 people to a company of more than 300 people. There's amazing people in the industry. There's amazing stories to be told with other people. I love that character so much. <laughs> <laughs> we're very experimental here at Bioware, so we're always coming up with new stuff. <laughs> We're always trying to improve, innovate, and bring new characters to life for our players and fans to enjoy. Mm. The world of Dragon Age really has got it all. It's got frontier stories, it's got mystery, it's got hard-boiled detective stories. And of course, it's all wrapped up in kind of a fantasy setting. You really feel like you're the hero in the Dragon Age world and you're saving people. Dragon Age to me is a wonderful world to play in. I am really excited about the future of Dragon Age. This is an original world, original flora, original wildlife, original architecture. That makes it fun to explore and discover. In the next Dragon Age, we get an opportunity to, to see new things, new places, and interact with people who lived and grew up in these spaces as well. <laughs> For the game we're working on now, we want to tell a story, what happens when you don't have power? What happens when the people in charge aren't willing to address the issues? The things that you can expect in the next installment are going to be stories that focus on the people around you and the friends and family you make. Something that we'll be able to look forward to in Dragon Age is a really close relationship with game characters who really become real for you. We want characters to either be loved or hated. One of the best examples of that is Solus. Half the community wants to kill him, half the people want to marry him, and another part want to do both. They call me the Dread Wolf. What will they call you when this is over? Bioware and EA has been one of the forerunners in using motion magic technology, and that makes it way more realistic when you're looking at the characters and the way they walk and move and interact in the world. 
players want in that suspension of disbelief that this wonderful collection of digital pixels is actually a living breathing look nice no 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 it's okay that's the good kind of rumble i actually design bosses i help with the creature design team as well so i do all of like the big threats that you have to go up against nobody dies on my watch for the wardens choice is a big part of what dragon age is as a franchise the decisions you make can affect change in the world just dragon age might be Making the best that, that uh, the best one that ever came out party member it, like, it looks totally different and it means owning your looks way different activity to the choices that you do make i just love the possibilities that dragon age offers us and i'm excited to explore a lot more of them to me that potential is what gets you up in the morning it's a fantastic opportunity every time. Next up, it's time for something special. Oh, okay. Great Scott. Uh -oh. I think there's uh, back to the future. Wow, wait, you're uh, what? What's his name? Back to the future. I'm Emmett Brown, doctor of physics, not of medicine. I'm certainly not that quack from Rick and Morty. Yeah, we know who you are, but what Jeff, are you doing here? I did come back from the future to this precise moment on August 27, 2020, because it's imperative we launch Surgeon Simulator 2 right now. And what exactly do you have to do with Surgeon Simulator? During the mid 20th century, some friends of mine from Bernard Shire University invented a state of the art medical training facility, otherwise known as the Surgeon Simulator Training Program. Now, 70 years later, we digitize the experience. Uh it's unbelievable. You can access the program through your computer and then be medically trained from the comfort of your keyboard. And it's available as of <gasps> Great Scott, this very moment. Tonight, I'm uh -oh. a world premiere, a few examples of some of the incredibly successful test subjects who have already completed the course. So you're saying a world premiere will save our future? Only time will tell. And speaking of time, I'm off to another world premiere. Avengers 26, The Return of the Son of Thanos, opening 2077. And with that, I leave the fate of the human race in your hands. Just make sure you play Surgeon Simulator 2. Now, doctor's orders. World premiere. But he's a bathroom queen, y'all. That's what he said, no! Sir, we give him a little pat on the head. Where does this path go? We, there, we got it. He looks good as new. Now grab the good arm and bring it in here. We're dying. He's dying. Oh, oh no! I think it's the right. My finger slipped. I think it's the right. Oh, it came out! It did come out! Jesus Christ. Put it back. Oh, oh it's just oh, 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 it's oh, it's <laughs> Doc Brown introducing Jacksepticeye playing Surgeon Simulator only on <laughs> opening night live. All right, well, if you thought that crossover was kind of crazy, wait until you get a load of this next game announcement that I don't think anyone probably saw coming. Check this out. I hope I ain't missing nothing good.
Uh oh. Yeah, bread's constructor. Fucking good. Oh. <laughs> Tonight is just the start of Gamescom 2020. Over the next three days, there wow. are more streams from IGN and Webedia with in-depth looks at games, a digital cosplay contest, and some special new shows just for Gamescom. Your portal for all things Gamescom this year is Gamescom Now, which you can check out at Gamescom.global. Now, one game you'll hear more about later on IGN's post-show is this one, a return of two classic characters that I love. Check this out. In a world gone strange. One elite force stands against the darkness. <laughs> but even though you need some help, here, slip on this little beauty for effect. Uh, Sam, I'm blind. Oh, hello, miss. Well. The return of Sam and Max. Yes. All right. And now it's time to say hello to my wonderful co-host for ONL from IGN. Please say hello to Sydney Goodman. Thank you, Jeff. What's up, everyone? I'm Sydney Goodman, and I am thrilled to be here. Gamescom is always such a fun event, and throughout the show tonight, I'll be telling you about all the different ways that IGN is involved in this year's festivities. But first, I have an award to announce. The winner of Best Nintendo Switch Game is Little Nightmares 2. Huge congratulations. Like I said, IGN is going to be here for what? all Gamescom with great shows such as Gamescom Studio, where you can find me and my co-hosts for all day long games content, interviews, dev talks, and more. Plus, we have Gamescom Awesome Indies, the show with and for indie developers. That premieres Saturday, August 29th at 7 p.m. Central European time, so be sure to tune in for more announcements and special guests. And now, let's go back to Jeff for our next big world premiere. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sid. Uh, we are so excited to see what's in the uh, the Gamecom <laughs> studio and also awesome indies. And I'm going to be on the Daily Show tomorrow, so looking forward to that. All right, well, on to our next game. In world the of next Warcraft. World of Warcraft expansion, players will journey beyond the mortal world of Azeroth to a place where no living soul has set foot before. The Shadowlands, the afterlife of an entire Warcraft universe. The infinite realms of the Shadowlands are watched over by different factions, known as Covenants, each holding dominion over a different aspect of the afterlife. And depending on how someone lived their mortal life, they may end up as part of one of these Covenants when they cross over into the Shadowlands. Today, we're excited to give you a closer look at the noble and pure Kyrian Covenant from the realm of Bastion, who are charged with carrying the souls of the dead into the beyond. So sit back and get ready for the world premiere of Bastion, the first in Blizzard Entertainment's new four-part series of animated shorts called Afterlives. Enjoy. A truly selfless life, and for that, 
You have been chosen. Chosen? To shed your mortal burdens and join the ranks of the Ascended, serving to ferry the souls of the dead unto the Shadowlands. I serve the light, and my work is not done. There is an evil that must be... There is no evil here. The darkness was sealed within the Maw long ago. You're wrong. He destroyed my home, murdered my people and my king. He must be punished. You are an aspirant now. You must accept your new purpose and purge yourself of this desire for vengeance. What I desire is justice. Devos, why are you training this soul? It is beneath your station as a paragon. He cannot let go. He continues to demand retribution for his death. And this concerns you? Many souls take eons to ascend. Yes, but this one seems broken, Venios. Unlike any soul I have seen. I have begun to wonder whether he was deemed worthy of Bastion. By mistake. Be careful, Devos. I would not let the Archon hear such a thought. In time, he will forget. Trust our ways. Trust the path. we train until you are ready to ascend and what is keeping me from ascension nothing but the memory of your mortal life how can i forget when i can still feel his blade your soul is wounded who did this to you he was my student. He betrayed us all. Show me. <sighs> the runes on his blade were unmistakable. This dark agent runs free on a mortal world with the power of the Maw itself in hand. Our realm is imperiled. Impossible. The Maw is inescapable. You must return to the path. If he had purged his life, we never would have known of this calamity. The path is flawed. Enough! The order of the Shadowlands depends on the execution of our eternal charge. You will abandon this course. As you command, my Archon. of your ascension has come. I thought I was not ready. Do you wish to see him punished? I do. Then prepare yourself. The moment he falls, we will claim him. I see. Only darkness.
justice. That pretty fire. I like the storyline. I'm always into it the whole time. That was nice. <laughs> you guys enjoyed that exclusive look at Bastion. Now we know many of you can't wait to experience Shadowlands and our friends at Blizzard want you to know the wait is almost over. <clears throat> October 27th. Mm. October 27th, it is official. And we have so much more Opening Night Live still to go for you. Ratchet and Clank, PlayStation 5, uh, much more. Stay tuned. All right. But now it's time for the announcement of a new universe that is coming to gaming for the first time with a project from a Canadian studio. Check this out. They have returned. They corrupted, divided, <laughs> conquered, until finally, Focus, the gates War of the Hammer. celestial realm Gascogain. were thrown open. Our last remaining yep. hope, the Stormcast Eternals, vengeance made manifest. He's a Sigma Stormground. Here for the Silver Switch, Xbox One, Unreal Engine. Now, you guys may remember back in June, I had some masked fun with my buddy Crash Bandicoot announcing <sighs> Crash 4, It's About Time. With the game coming in October, Crash, of course, had to come back for opening night live. So let's bring him out, everybody. Crash Bandicoot. What? He's where? That's crazy, right? <laughs> apparently didn't get the memo about Gamescom. But to tell us more about what we just saw, I'm joined by Lou Studdert from Toys for Bob. Uh, Lou, w what did we see there with uh, Crash and the Gamescom bot? <laughs> uh, apparently you saw him wandering around Cologne, but uh, what he was hinting at was kind of our reveal of what we call flashback tapes, which are a brand new style of level that we are announcing here today. Okay, so uh, how do these flashback levels kind of play into the overall Crash 4 narrative? 
Yeah, so the way that the, the flashback tape levels work is that they are kind of a peak back in time to the 90s when Neocortex was actually testing on Crash and Coco before the events of Crash Bandicoot 1. And they're kind of these devious puzzle rooms that we've made, uh, and they're really hard, and they're really awesome, and they're super creative, and we can't wait to uh, get people's hands on them. Yeah, no, I, I, I got to play a demo of this a few weeks ago, and that was a challenge, so I can't imagine um, how <laughs> nefarious these are. Um, how are they going to be sort of integrated into the game? Are they, are they optional, like, offshoot stuff, or how do you, how do you get to them? Sure. So players actually have to collect the flashback tapes in the levels themselves. Uh, they're an object that they can pick up, and to actually pick them up, they have to reach them in the level without dying. It's uh, kind of our homage to the death routes from the original trilogy. So players have to reach these objects in the level, pick them up, and then once they get them, they'll get access to these unique levels. So beyond the pure challenge, uh, what other fun, so how, how are these fun for players to kind of experience? What do they get to do in them? Sure. So one of the things that we did was we actually used these as, like I said, puzzle rooms, really kind of fun, nefarious, devious ways for Crash to really express that pure platforming kind of uh, aspect of gameplay that we know and love about the franchise. But then narratively for us, it was really cool to layer in kind of a unique perspective to the franchise. This is the moment when Cortex is really excited about the prospect of Crash being on his team, because Crash was originally created by Cortex, and so this is a weird point in time that's never really been explored in the games before. Awesome, all right, well, Crash 4, it's about time. Looks phenomenal, Lou. Uh, we cannot wait to check it out uh, in October. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Awesome, all right, well, we will be right back after this for more Gamescom Opening Night Live. Become terror. You can't the unseen predator. You can't A rupture. This look this look pretty good. Warning. Oh. Alone, the hordes of Enoch will fall before me. But together, this entire planet. Outrider, that look pretty good. In our own ways. Every time I see it, new commercial. Every time it comes out, into the dark heart of creation. every time it comes out, it, I will, uh, I'll get more interested. We will find the source, whatever it holds, whatever it takes. Outriders look pretty good, man. Welcome to the hyperscape. Enter a contender. Yes, take them. Believe as a I played this game too. First game got five kills. That's my first time ever playing that. Like that. This is it. Uh, it's all right. This game. So this show this game already. Well, not not at, the, at this show, but in general. Get the Busca. Welcome to Necromunda. I can see you're new here. Let me get you up to speed. The Underhive's named well. A sprawl of humanity suffering away like ants. Deep underground where we ain't causing trouble for the rich boys and girls, no matter how loud we are. And do we ever make some noise? 
Every Orlock says they could shoot the tail off a lashwork and they'd splash your head from 20 paces for saying they couldn't. I don't want to say immortal, but when their armor, blood, skin, and will are of iron, it's a potent combo. Why would someone like you want to know about an all-female gang of psychopaths, drug dealers, killers, uh. cloners, and... Oh, makes sense. And Escher will cut you up just for the fun of it. Goliaths are big. That's it. Anything smaller than them doesn't deserve to live. And they're just as happy... They look pretty good. Lead ...as they are smashing you to pieces with a power mold. Now, mixing that whole pot together in a place like this, you can imagine what happens. Chaos. Gang warfare. For wealth. For power. Hell. This looks real good. just for fun. So, think you're ready? Necromunda Under High Wars comes to PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC on September 8th. Nice. O futuro dos jogos, além de realidades virtuais extremamente fidedignas e realistas, eu acho que também se encontra em formas mais expressivas e absurdas, quebrando cada vez mais esses paradigmas de formato de videogame que a gente tem e sendo usado mais do que nunca como uma ferramenta de expressão artística. I envision the future gaming to be quite bright and quite online. The next generation of console will clearly allow AAA and indie developers to build more creative-driven games that I hope will cover more diverse subjects. I want to play all kinds of stories about people and places both real and imagined. I want comedy games, I want autobiographical games. I really want to see what people can do with the medium. Para o futuro dos games, eu vejo uma evolução obviamente gráfica, mas eu vejo ainda mais evolução na inteligência artificial e na maneira com a qual a gente interage com os games tudo em busca de experiências mais imersivas you know one of the things I love about opening night is that we can show you the biggest games in the industry and also smaller titles that should be on your radar so pay attention to this next game it comes from a team of two in Sweden uh. tuxedo labs over the past three years, developer Dennis Gustafsson has built his own game engine to realize his vision for a fully destructible game world. What he's building has your absolutely game blown engine? me away, so I asked Dennis to prepare a special trailer just for tonight. I hope you're equally inspired by the ideas in this next game, definitely one to watch. Teardown. Whoop, me. Yeah. Tuxedo Labs. Oh. Play it a truly interactive. Oh. Look kind of fire though. Nice, nice concept. More like, more, for, more for like PC or oh, Xbox. Like Minecraft, you know, like a realistic. Minecraft, like a better graphical Minecraft. Last year at Opening Night Live, we announced Little Nightmares 2 to the world. Well, the team at Tarsier Studios hasn't shown anything since, but that changes right now. Here is a first look at the gameplay of Little Nightmares 2, which is coming next February, with more to come throughout the week at Gamescom, including a live demo on Gamescom Studio 
tomorrow. We're up in the air. Nice. All right, thank you. Music made me sleepy. Music made me sleep. I hate music like this. Not like at nighttime to be cool, but at daytime, it's watching. Uh, didn't they say it's the best game on on um Nintendo stuff? I'm WWE Hall of Famer Jerry the King Lawler, and I'm reuniting with my old buddy Mauro Ranallo to bring you all the over-the-top action in WWE 2K Battleground. Mamma mia! <laughs> this is great. This arcade-style video game is over-the-top outrageous with over 70 WWE superstars and legends brawling it out like never before. Oh, no. Hold on to your 2K, Morrow. Look out below. WWE is L-I-T. You know, I'm a little more old school than Morrow, so I can't wait to see these WWE legends teach these right kids back. a thing or two. And you know what? Here's a closer look at the insane action. It's a great evening for WWE action. Oh, wow. Take that, Moro. Man, it's so good to see the Bella Twins at their best. And now, let's keep this party rolling with another matchup. Oh, look out, Moro. The Undertaker has risen, and Finn Balor is about to be taken for his last ride. Mamma mia, what a move. Finish him. Oh, no. He just hit the snooze button. How do you lose like that? What's the matter with you, legends? This is just an example of the pandemonium that you're going to experience when you head to the battlegrounds. Woo, that's a big toy hammer. Oh, I can't believe my eyes. Seth Rollins delivers the stop. What a night. What a night. This is the greatest thing I've ever seen. Pre-order WWE 2K Battlegrounds today and brawl without limits. Sorry, Moro, I know that's your line. Hello again. I have even more awards to announce, so let's get right down to it. The winner of the Best Action Adventure Game is Watch Dogs Legion. The city needs a resistance. And it starts with you. What do you say? multiplayer game is Operation Tango. Operation Tango. It takes two to save the world.
Expedition 2. Did not believe what I had witnessed. It was time for the world to learn my name. Congratulations to all the winners. As I mentioned, IGN will be here for all of Gamescom with great shows and new ways for you to get all your gaming news. Check it out. Gamescom 2020 is the heart of gaming, and you can keep to the beat right here on IGN. We've turned the single biggest show in gaming into five. Gamescom Now is your virtual show floor with up to the second live coverage. Gamescom Daily Show, Gamescom's first ever late night talk show. Our Gamescom Awesome Indie Show, the freshest deep cuts in indie gaming. And finally, the Gamescom Best of Show, including the Gamescom Award. Gamescom 2020 is available on IGN and wherever you stream Gamescom Now. And now it is time to talk about that best action game winner, Star Wars Squadrons. This is a new immersive space combat game from Motive Studios that delivers the ultimate Star Wars pilot fantasy. We've missed those. In Squadrons, you'll suit up and fly for both the New Republic and the Galactic Empire across intense 5v5 multiplayer battles, as well as an all-new authentic single-player story set after the events of Star Wars Episode VI, Return of the Jedi. Today, we'll get a glimpse at what Squadron's story has to offer by taking a brief look at one of the single-player missions featuring some light narration by the Motive team. Let's check it out. We all choose our path. Light or dark. Freedom or destruction. The Empire chose to destroy Alderaan in order to spread fear and douse the fires of rebellion. But the heroic pilots of the Rebel Alliance have chosen to keep fighting, to show the Empire that we are not afraid. It was their bravery that ended Palpatine's reign and brought about our new Republic. However, the Empire lives on, shattered though it may be. As I speak, Imperial forces are edging toward the Bormia sector, hoping to end our new Republic before we find our footing. As their Empire collapses, they try to tighten their grip. But the galaxy oh, is changing, and you can be a part of it. With the help of brave and daring pilots, this war can end. Make a choice. Fly with the new Republic. Change our galaxy for the better. See the galaxy for the better. Hi, I'm Suzanne Hanka, narrative producer on Star Wars Squadrons. Our single player story is one of daring pilots and deep seated rivalries. Take Titan Squadron, hunt down this star. And eliminate it. Gladly, Admiral Sloan. Over the course of the story, you'll fly as two pilots on opposite sides of the war. And, like all modes in Star Wars Squadrons, you'll Look have nice, the man. option to experience every mission VR fully gameplay. immersed in VR. Wedge Antilles, Rogue Squadron. I hear you're the reason I was able to finally get a comm through. Today, nice. we're giving you a glimpse of an early Imperial mission behind enemy lines. One of our spies, Agent Thorne, has discovered vital intelligence on Project Starhawk. Your mission is to extract her from an orbital outpost above Hosni and Prime. Behind enemy lines, you'll have to eliminate perimeter defenses. The outpost is defenseless. That's nice. When you I like that. the area, you will escort the Gladius to the outpost, and our extraction team will acquire Agent Thorne. Once Thorn is secure, reach your Gozanti cruisers and return to the Overseer. Cover our escape and escort us to the jump point. We have Republic Corvettes inbound. Move, Titan! Ladies, change course and keep Agent Thorn safe. Titan 3, take out those fighters. Understood. I'll handle it. You have my thanks, Titan Squadron. No time to celebrate. Each mission will immerse you into the escalating conflict between the New Republic and a Shattered Empire. Debrief with your squadmates between missions. You're our new wingmate. Customize and master all eight starfighters and join the galaxy's finest. I need you focused and ready to go. From bombing runs at the Nadiri dockyards to setting a trap in the Xavian Abyss. The story of these rival squadrons will push the war to the brink and define the galaxy for years to come. I look forward to seeing you in combat October 2nd. October?
That is not all EA has to share from a galaxy <laughs> far, far away today. At Star Wars Galaxy Edge, you can enter the world of Batu, where you can visit Oga's Cantina or jump into the Millennium Falcon on a run to Smuggler's Cove. It was this incredible adventure at Disneyland Resort and Walt Disney World Resort that inspired The Sims' latest game pack. Check this out. Sims. Oh. Wow. <laughs> the Sims one. Star Wars on the Sims? Wow. That's new. I have my one PS4. There is even more Star Wars to come later in the show. Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker Saga is up. And as we move into our second hour, we've got Fall Guys Season 2 still to come. The reveal of that, which I can't wait for you guys to see. And of course, a gameplay demo of Ratchet and Clank ripped oh. apart for PlayStation 5. But right now, you might remember this next game from Annapurna Interactive from last year's Microsoft E3 event. And today, I'm excited to share a new announcement from the team. This interactive thriller about a man stuck in a time loop is one of this year's most intriguing indie titles, and now they've added an absolutely all-star cast to the game. Here's a whole new look at 12 Minutes. I see. All right, close your eyes. I want you to think of a flower. Look at its contours, its curves. Now I want you to imagine it changing, moving backward, returning to its bud. Think of that bud, unopened. Look at it as a whole. Silently repeat these phrases. May you be free from suffering. May you be free from fear. May you know peace and joy. It's going to be a really special indie game. So glad to announce that here on the show. Uh, now, last year at the Game Awards, we announced Godfall, a new okay. looter Godfall. shooter coming to PlayStation 5 and PC from Counterplay. Tonight, we've got a quick sneak peek of one of the new Valor plates with more footage coming as part of Gamescom 2020. Check this out. I see how this goes. Let me see what That's it? 
We have much more ONL to come. Exclusive looks at Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker Saga, Fall Guys Season 2. <laughs> Wait until you see what the Mediatonic guys are up to, and so much more. But first, I'm sure you saw that earlier this week, Heart of Deimos, Warframe's newest uh, expansion was released on PC, Xbox, and PS4. And today, it's also on Switch, all platforms. Here's a look at the Heart of Deimos. Expand, explore, tear the veil asunder. Subvert new territory to our sovereign will. But that was what it wanted too. It raged unchecked through metal, bone, flesh. Life, we are infested with it. What? Visitors? Now, the gateway is failing. The jaws close. The final heartbeat approaches. Have you tried turning it off and on again? But before we fall, we shall scream. There is one will hear the heart of Deimos. Okay. I used to be a big Warfare fan, uh, fan so when the PS4 first came out. That was my main game at the time. During lockdown, whether it be older the character Rhino was my favorite. You had the Valkyrie, and you had um, was someone um, regular, the regular but re regular and ninja. I think I've given out more advice about favorites. video games in 2020 than any other time ever. And as a result, it's more important than ever that we keep making different interesting things for folks to play. A pandemia pela qual a gente está passando tem sido um período difícil a todos. Então, nesse momento eu acho que a gente precisa lembrar de mostrar mais empatia, demonstrar mais amor, mais carinho e saber que a gente vai sair dessa juntos, vai ser difícil mas isso tudo vai passar. I hope everybody gets healthy and safely through this corona virus time. Uh, care about other people and wear your masks. Jogos são, na minha opinião pessoal, a forma de arte mais incrível de se expressar. Eles englobam tudo: música, arte, escrita, e você tem a chance de controlar e vivenciar essas experiências você mesmo. É mágico. É maravilhoso. Jogos são por amor. Copyright music. Copyright music to cut it off for a little while. Copyright music. You gotta cut it off for a minute. You don't want to get a copyright to video. It's crazy. It's crazy. More like Gundam in, in Power Rangers. Uh-oh. 
All right, guys, we're back officially into hour two. We've got an hour more of great stuff to show you. Destiny 2 Beyond Light Stasis. You're going to see a brand new look at that. Fall Guys Season 2 and Ratchet and Clank for PlayStation 5 and so much more across the next hour. Opening Night Live continues, and it just is the well, start the next of hour, so let's see what kind of hype but they right can bring out. Right now, out on September 25th, Mafia uh, launches a comprehensive, built-from-the-ground-up remake of the original Mafia. Tonight, we've got the exclusive debut of the next trailer, called A Life of Reward Too Big to Ignore, which deals with Tommy's induction into the Salieri crime family. Check this out. All these guys in this room, this looks good. Here because they have the only thing that matters to me. The only thing that should matter to any of us. You know what that is, Tommy? They're loyal. That's right. Mafia. Is it Mafia? One day you're busting your back doing an honest day's work in a city that's been trying to scrape you off its heels since the day you stepped off the boat. And then next you're stuffing your pockets full of Salieri's dirty money. <laughs> Go get him, Tommy! Teach these boys a lesson. Break every bone in their bodies. You want me to become one of those Wall Street boys? Don't sass me, Tommy. I'm trying to teach you the ropes so you don't get strangled by them. Oh. Now you stay straight with me, you're gonna be living the high life, Tom. You abuse my trust. Don Celieri. Dan Celieri. You ready to worry about me. Okay, then. Welcome to the family. Mafia Definitive Edition. Next, we're going to introduce you to a turn-based multiplayer strategy FPS from a team in Montreal, Canada, Lemnis Gate. is coming in early 2021 and has a unique mechanic built around a 25-second time loop. Check this out. Let us see now. Rat loop. <laughs> Turn beast game. Hmm. Unreal, kind of like games looking a little bit better than uh, the first hour. Get ready to experience Legos. memorable moments and non-stop action from all nine Star Lego Wars Star films Wars. Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. <sighs> the entire series has been reimagined with new fun-filled Lego humor. And now we've got your first look at the gameplay trailer. A lot of people say the Star Wars Batman, Star Wars, all the Star Wars games, basically Star Wars Legos, let's see, Star Wars Lego games or Lego games are good. I want to learn the ways A lot of people tell me that. And become a Jedi like my father. The force is unusually strong with him. That much is clear. Okay, look at the it. Side. It looks good. Like a lot Skywalker of people know that. Become. A lot of people know that uh Lego Batman and all those games be good. So I, I, I don't doubt. Uh, these Batman games will be bad. Or this Star Wars games will be bad at all. Look really interesting. So I'm from the Resistance. Your sister Leia sent me. We need your help.
Force will be with you, always. Ooh. Not him, the Falcon. <laughs> I am a Jedi, like my father before me. So be it, Jedi. Man, Lego Star Wars looks so fun coming to next gen as well. All right, we'll be right back with more world premieres from huge new games like Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart, Medal of Honor, Above and Beyond, and Destiny 2. But before that, here's a look at a game that is launching tonight on Nintendo Switch and Steam. It's called Struggling from Frontier, a fun physics-based platformer where up to two players control Troy, our fleshy hero. Check this out, and remember, you can play this tonight. Oh wow. This is weird, fool. <laughs> oh my god, bro. I knew it was gonna be some crazy like the fleshy. Come on, bro. This stuff is crazy, man. It's crazy, man. That's what Abbas can do. Oh, <laughs> oh come on. Come on, man. This should be like for PC only or something. Two new civilizations. The Empire 3. I remember Asian Empire, I used to see that a lot. I say it's a studio only for PC, bro. What is this? Where are we? We're near Little Hope. It's weird. What uh -oh. more proof is needed that the devil walks among us in Little Hope? Go to leg. Take go to leg. That's this is not me. This is um whoever streaming is. Stream.
Project Cars is pretty good. I say, the game that I've given the most hours to that I love going back to is Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Not to say since Origins came out, this new reboot of Assassin's Creed, uh, so to speak. That was my first time getting into it. And I have put almost 400 hours into Assassin's Creed Odyssey. At the moment, I enjoy to play Fall Guys uh, with my friends. It's very funny, easy to learn, but hard to master. I have a few games that I binge play, um, games that I return to every year. Uh, Halo, the entire Master Chief Collection, is really a big one for me where that's concerned. But I also still just casually binge Animal Crossing, and I've been doing that basically all year. I haven't put down Animal Crossing since I downloaded it. I find the daily repetitive rhythm so soothing and predictable. Uh, although, much like my house, my island is still a complete tip. Up next, we have the award for Best Microsoft Xbox Game. And the winner is Tell Me Why. Congratulations to Don't Not Entertainment. Well, okay. after a big day of Gamescom events and announcements, you'll be happy to know that IGN is going to help you digest all that info with Gamescom Daily Show, where you can get all the daily highlights and a late night show experience from gamers for gamers. Back to you, Jeff. Thank you very much, Sid. Uh, and by the way, congratulations to Don't Nod for uh, Tell Me Why, a really important <coughs> game that is out now that you can play um, on Xbox, Xbox and Game Pass. And uh, as we know, there's a lot going on in the world and that goes beyond the pandemic. Uh, between social conflicts we're seeing in the news and acts of nature, we can see how vulnerable we as people can sometimes be. And now I think it's as important time as ever to remember to come together and support one another. We are a global gaming community. There are millions of people watching tonight, and I know we're all here because we love games and we know that games are good in the world and can bring us together. And I think we've all felt that in 2020. So I think that's really important to remember amongst all the games and trailers. All right, well, one, ga uh, one, one way as a community we can come together to do some good is the Gamescom Forest. Gamescom has launched a reforestation project <laughs> by planting a Gamescom Forest together with the community. Gamers worldwide can go to gamescom.global and donate to plant more trees. So let's plant a forest together. All right, well, now we're going to move on to another game, and this one was announced back in May. <coughs> Chorus is a dark space combat shooter where players take control of Nara on a quest to destroy the dark cult that created her, featuring rich, ray-traced 4K 60 FPS environments okay, on next-gen hardware. Here is the first look at gameplay from Chorus. Let's see what it is. How many crowns have you won? If one game Dude, has defined the summer of 2020, like it absolutely is Fall Guys. That is crazy. In London and Devolver. This game is setting records and putting a much needed smile on everyone's face. Fall Guys, I think, represents our industry at its absolute best. Well, soon the Fall Guys experience will evolve with season two. There's a lot of new stuff coming, and tonight, Media Tonic is about to give you an exclusive sneak peek. Let's see. At I like Fall Guy. Fall Guy pretty good. Simple and from two friends. Is about simple. to freak out. Here it is, Fall Guys season two. Will premiere. Hey, I'm Joe. I'm the lead game designer on Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout, and I just wanted to reach out and say thank you to everyone who's been playing and enjoying the game so far. As a team, we've been looking at all boom, the fan arts, boom, the memes, boom, and the montages boom, that people have been boom, posting online, boom. and the response to the game has really blown us away. 
Today, we just wanted to give everyone their first sneak peek at the rounds and the costumes that they can be enjoying as part of Fall Guys Season 2. You'll be dressing your fall guy as a medieval hero and competing across brand new rounds inspired by epic quests from the Middle Ages. Traverse giant drawbridges, dodge swinging axes, and scale movable siege ramps in the quest for ultimate game show glory. enjoyed the sneak peek of Fall Guys Season 2. We're still adding the finishing touches to development, but if you want to stay up to date, then at Fall Guys Game on Twitter is where you want to be. So you on the start line. My father has Colorado in the palm of his hand, and he's afraid to close his fist. I am not. What kind of game is this? Not bad. Liberty's got more brains and cunning than both her brothers put together. <sighs> She's the only one who could actually run Colorado. She's already tried once. Vic's a depraved child, and Val's a brain without a spine. The years my father wasted grooming them for glory when I was right there. to Arizona Rangers and I'll pretend none of this happened stay and die alone lose land three I really haven't found any new appreciation for gaming at this time because my appreciation for gaming before couldn't be higher Com certeza, jogos multiplayer preenchem completamente a conexão social que eu preciso ter com outras pessoas nesses tempos de isolamento. E é o mais próximo que a gente pode ter de experiências reais com pessoas que estão longe da gente. Você pode viajar todo o mundo em games, que é algo que eu sempre tenho por granted. Eu não sei se você está falando com o Tsushima. E, você sabe, eu gosto do real Japão, só porque eu ouvi que, na realidade, eles não te deixam correr com os tanners. Eu aprecio games. A lot more than films, music, or whatever, and it's just fine uh, for me to to have the time to play with friends or even with my family uh, to have a lot of fun. I've been mostly at home with small children, and gaming is the only thing that I get to do for myself anymore. I find it's not only an escape; it's also a way to challenge my brain. Gaming is becoming clearly more important for a lot of people. You know, play is a natural instinct, and from Animal Crossing to The Last of Us Part 2 or Ori, yes, yes, it's definitely an incredible time now to be a gamer, yes. Uh. Hey everyone, uh. I'm Vince Sampella, head of Respawn Entertainment. Okay, let's go. When we set out to create Medal of Honor above and beyond, we knew we wanted to bring the series back to its roots. The Medal of Honor franchise is known for its powerful and exciting Be son was X, um, I believe, the in the boots Infinity a War, a Sledgehammer, a uh, developers. The one who did Titanfall. So now they do a Medal of Honor. Medal of Honor hmm. in 1999 is back at the helm of this project. You'll hear more from him in just a bit. Peter and I actually worked together on Medal of Honor Allied Assault in 2002. And I'm really happy he's joined us at Respawn to craft a completely new experience in VR. We are. The team is creating a riveting and emotional journey through World War II like you've never seen or played. 
It weaves in the personal stories of the veterans and survivors of the war through powerful interviews that help set the stage for what players will experience. It's more than just a game. And we could not be more excited to show the world the next look at Medal of Honor Above and Beyond and the game's action-packed story. Let's take a look. World premiere. Follow content is for mature audience. I know this is the first time some of you will see combat. I know you're scared. Let me be clear with all of you. I'm scared too. Welcome to France, gentlemen. I lead the local resistance cell. Something big is happening inside Gestapo headquarters, and we don't know what it is. We're gonna have to improvise here. Jeez, we are, we are. We are doing a lot of things. Ooh. Members of the resistance are perhaps the bravest people fighting in this war. But you really should stop. There is no future in it. Sorry to interrupt, Lieutenant. Yes, how to do. Be a wild ride, but we'll get you there. Jet fighters, brace yourselves. Somehow, this motley crew has been tasked with saving civilization. God help us all. Oh, this for Oculus Rift. Thank you so much, Vince. That looks incredible. And now we're here with Respawn Entertainment's Peter Hirschman, game director on Medal of Honor Above and Beyond, to talk more about their new VR experience. Uh, Peter, oh. I got to say, the trailer really grabbed me. Such an incredible <laughs> story that you're telling, too. Uh, tell us a bit about this single player. One thing about me, I hate expect. sitting down and watching. Well, Jeff, thank you for having us on the show. The, what I'm you representing a whole team a back at Respawn. Two hours or watch it really hard on this, and it's uh, so exciting to like premiere the trailer this is uh, with you. Uh, Metal uh, going it's back like to its roots. Uh, was team show is putting, so. Oh, uh, the dang. Player it's like me going to work and I got to watch a, in World War II. a presentation um, and with VR, about getting to a new planet. In almost a literal way, uh, it's it's definitely the most immersive experience, most immersive combat experience uh, uh, I've ever been able to work on. Um, and the story follows uh, you as a player being recruited into the Office of Strategic Services, um, commonly known as the OSS. Uh, and their mission was sabotage, espionage, search and rescue, everything uh, in between. Uh, you name it, they did it. Um, and they're known by a different set of initials uh, now, the, the CIA. Um, but during World War II, uh, they sent operatives all, all over Europe, uh, deep behind enemy lines. Uh, and that allows us to tell a story where you get to go to these places and locations and participate in events that really helped shape the outcome of the war. One of the things I love about the trailer is you can tell there's a lot of interactivity in the environment, emergent gameplay. You, you got the piano and other things in there. Tell us a bit about um, how you're using that to, to tell the story. It seems like it's all kind of through a first person perspective, but there are some story sequences. How do you tell the story? Oh, well, we shot, we shot over 120 pages of narrative, um, you know, which is more than some feature films. Uh, we had a, a huge international cast of phenomenal actors. Uh, and, and it was fantastic. And the story follows a, a, a classic three, three act structure. Um, act one is working with the, the French resistance, getting ready for the invasion. Uh, act two is D-Day itself and the fight uh, to get to Berlin. 
Uh, and then the third act is dealing with the Nazi secret weapon program, which you know, involved things like the 262 uh, jet and the V2 rocket and, and things that could have really turned the tide of the war if, if we hadn't stopped them. Um, so you get to go on this, this journey, you know, this story. Um, and the story is shot all from your perspective. Because it's VR, your head is the camera. We don't have cutscenes. we don't have edits. Everything, uh, everything revolves around your perspective. So you experience this story completely in first person as, as if you are there. Um, so it creates a much more intimate and, and uh, uh, emotional connection with the characters and the things going on around you. Uh, it, it was a, an incredible way to, to shoot. Um, one of our animators stood in for the, the player throughout, uh, throughout the three weeks that we were on stage. Um, and all the actors are, are always reacting and talking to you directly. And in VR, it's such a, a powerful thing. It's all about building that oh, emotional connection. And it just makes the experience all the more uh, authentic. Well, you and Vince, I know this this series is really close to your heart. And uh, I, 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 I'm like, wow, there's just Ooh, lag so bad. there to experience. Again, it this is not really my connection. It's obviously authentic as well. Whoever's streaming uh, this. You know, paying tribute okay. um, to everyone that uh, was involved in, in the war. I, I wanted to ask you also about multiplayer, which is something that Respawn is really known for. And you've had a great single <sighs> player experience, but I hear you might also be doing MP too. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, the thing about VR is that, uh, you know, I spent so much, I mean, we've known each other a long time. I, you know, I, you know, you spent so much of your career trying to map natural human movements to a to a controller. And just figuring out things like making death feel good, and, and one of the hardest ones is, is leaning. And in VR, you know how you duck? You, you just duck. And, and how you lean in VR, you, you just lean. And so the ability to lean around a corner, just kind of peek around the corner and see where the bad guy is, is just it, it heightens the tension so much. It makes it it makes it feel all the more real. And when you put that into a multiplayer experience, it, it just raises it to a whole nother level. So we are shipping, in addition to the campaign, we are shipping a, a, a full suite of VR modes, uh, including a few that you can only do in, in VR. And we're really excited about uh, people playing those, uh, um, you know, uh, after it comes out. Wow. Well, definitely a full-blown VR experience. I got to say, I'm really excited to uh, put the headset on and try this. And it's coming out uh, later this year, right? Coming out holiday. So, uh, yeah, fasten your seatbelts. Uh, we're, we're, we are so excited to, to bring it to players. We've been working on it a long time. Like, like you mentioned, it's a passion project for, for Vince and I and everyone at Respawn. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's a wonderful full circle uh, experience for a lot of us that got our started our careers working on those original set going back first one and 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 uh, Allied Assault and now to be able to bring above and beyond uh, to a whole new generation is uh, is one of the most exciting things we've been involved with. Awesome, thank you so much, Peter. Opening night live. We'll be right back, and in the meantime, here's a look at a new game that is launching tonight. The world was broken. Fractured by the magic the Valkyries said they would protect us from. The spell storms still rage across the ruins of the Hollow Lands. This is proof, they said. It isn't safe. It can't be controlled. Magic cannot be used. But I am a battle mage. I have broken my vow. And now I fight to break free.
Bert Schroot. So many great games in Xbox Game Pass, and many of the tonight's backup. games are in it as well. Uh, every year at Gamescom, we like to highlight some incredible games made in Germany. And tonight, we have a special announcement about one of the most legendary German games of all time, created by Factor 5. Enjoy. Factor 5 was so far ahead of the curve, and each of their games pushed game technology as far as possible. I'd say they're one of the greatest indie developers of all time. Sound is great, graphic is beautiful, gameplay is amazing, and it's really nice. I'm really happy to see this collection. This was the first game that allowed me to completely fulfill my musical vision. It defined my career and the fans have been there ever since. To this day, it's one of my proudest works. In June, Bungie revealed a Let's go. new era I'm of interested Destiny, in Destiny 2 that starts on November 10th with Beyond Light. For the first time ever, Guardians will add a new elemental Let's power go. to their I'm arsenal, the Dark Power of Stasis. With Stasis, <clears throat> players will take on the powers of darkness to control and dominate the battle. Here's an all-new look at Stasis from Destiny 2 Beyond Light. I love, I love Destiny. I know I play Destiny 2. I play Destiny 2 a lot. I'm a hunter by the way. Hunter, baby. Hunter. I like being fat. Let it grow. Our fight is far from over.
PlayStation game. So, without further ado, the winner is Cyberpunk 2077. Congratulations. Of course, there are even more awards than the ones I announced tonight. So check out the Gamescom Awards user voting, where you can vote for your favorite streamer, Gamescom's most wanted, and best of Gamescom. The winners will be revealed at Gamescom Best of Show, along with cool cosplayers, esports, and more. So tune in on Sunday, August 30th at 8 p.m. Central European time to see the grand finale of this year's Gamescom, where we give gamers the stage. That's it for me tonight, but before I turn it back to Jeff, I just wanna say that I hope everyone out there is staying safe and healthy. We're all in this together, so take care. Back to you, Jeff. Thank you very much, uh, Sydney, and it's great to have you on the show again this year. Uh, all right, well, a lot of people have been wondering what will the next generation of gaming feel like? How will it be different? What is that generational difference? Well, back in June, we saw the announcement of Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart from Insomniac Games, a title which uses the power of PlayStation 5, the SSD hard drive, and the DualSense controller to create an experience that Insomniac says is only possible on brand new hardware. Well, now it's time for you to decide if you see the difference. Here's an extended, uninterrupted demo of live PlayStation 5 gameplay of Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. Enjoy. Let's get it. <laughs> Capture on PS5, you can see the press X to start. Dimensionator, nefarious. Put down the Dimensionator. Yeah, right. Today, I will finally be free of the both of you. Soon, everything you see will be mine. Say goodbye. What did you do? Uh. to happen? Hitting Nefarious's device seems to have destabilized reality. The bridge is shot! There has to be another way across. Hmm. The rifts appeared to react to your device. Try pointing it at one of them. <laughs> that was rather exciting.
There's a lot of particles effects on that mug. Everywhere. Everywhere. That's the power of the PS5, baby. Ray tracing on the ground. Ooh, like that ray tracing. It looks good. I'm not a huge, huge, big fan of ray tracing. Like, oh, I, I, I must need to play games, but for single player games like this, it's, it's that's top notch. And that's what you want in a single player game. Now, you play multiplayer, you don't need ray tracing on that on multiplayer. So. But the particle effect is fire, though. A lot of particles. I will never get used to that. Hey, at least we're on the same planet this time. Nefarious is on the other side of that building. Let's get moving before he does anything else to break reality. Electric rod, like you shot the electric. Oh my god! Ratchet, we are too late. Ratchet? <coughs> Who? There you have it, Ratchet and Clank ripped apart, and now I am joined by Marcus Smith and Mike Daly from Insomniac Games. Uh, guys, it was so great to see that uh, long, uninterrupted demo of uh, Ripped Apart, and I have so many questions. Uh, it's amazing to see what you're doing with the power of PS5 and the SSD. Um, let me ask you first, Marcus, what are you able to do with Rift Apart that you haven't been able to do before in a Ratchet game because of the power of PS5? I mean, first and foremost, it's just pure horsepower enables us to fill our worlds with the kind of density and life that we've never been able to do before. Um, more importantly, perhaps, though, is the dimensional shifting that we have going on, which uses the SSD uh, that allows us to fling the player from planet to planet to planet uh, lightning fast, like in, in way, way faster than anything we've ever been able to do before. Yeah, the, the rift tether, we saw that in the uh, demo. We had seen some of that in the, the trailer. So that's that's all actual gameplay. Mike, I'm curious, like, how does that 
how does that work as you kind of play through the game? Are there certain moments and levels where you can jump or how, how do you play through that? Yeah, so in the game, there is dimensional damage spread throughout the galaxy that Ratchet and Clank have to find a way to fix. And you can find these weak points in space-time that you can pull to, to you with your rift tether. It's like being able to lasso a portal. And that enables you to basically like warp across the world to find new places to discover or gain a tactical advantage in combat. Wow, yeah, I gotta say, like, when you see that and you imagine the, the jumping from multiple worlds uh, at, 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 you know, at instantaneously almost, and it sounds like there's no load screens throughout the entire game? That's right. We're going to That's right, yep. Wow, all right, you bite. So confident both of you say it, I like it. Um, now, <laughs> let me ask you about DualSense. That's something that is a big part of PS5. Uh, I've had a chance to hands on with the controller with the addictive triggers. They lag again. Um, how are you using that for, to sort of impact the gameplay of Rift Apart? So at the heart of every Ratchet and Clank game is a powerful arsenal of weapons just exude a ton of personality. And the dual sense is sort of like, it feels like it was made for Ratchet and Clank just because the haptics give us a whole new layer for the weapons to express themselves. So for example, your burst pistol, of course it gives you like a satisfying click or kick with every bullet. But when you throw the shatter bomb, you can actually feel the energy pulsing off the grenade fade away as it gets further apart from you. Basically, the haptics are expressive enough that every weapon feels different and you can tell what you're holding. But of course, the adaptive trigger like takes that to a functional level where in addition to the trigger pull feeling unique, we can actually use that as a super intuitive way to add alternate functions to the weapons. So. For example, in the demo, we've got the Enforcer, which is a double-barreled shotgun. You can pull the trigger part of the way down until you hit resistance to fire a single barrel, and then whenever you feel like it's the right time, pull it the rest of the way for a double shot. So you might be swarmed by a bunch of little enemies. You only want to waste one shot on them, and then wait a minute for even more to swarm in before finishing them off. But a big guy, you probably want to just give both barrels to right away. So th there's a nice intuitive way of basically raising the skill ceiling and giving you more ways to play better. Wow, no, uh, I'm excited to see how you guys are gonna roll that out across what I'm sure are an insane uh, you know, group of weapons as always. Uh, plot wise, Marcus, tell us a bit about this game. I think some fans have wondered, you know, does this tie into the movie plot line, the game plot line, like how it would tell us in the ratchet verse where this sits. Yeah, well, canonically, this is a, an extension of uh, Ratchet and Clank um, into the Nexus, the 2013 game. But it's a standalone adventure, so it's one that, it, even if you've never played a Ratchet and Clank game, you can get into it and you'll understand it and you'll enjoy it. Um, for hardcore fans, we have a lot of nods. You're gonna you're gonna see a lot of returning characters and planets and uh, see them all through a whole new light of uh, multiple multiple dimensionality. Yeah, no, this this Rift Tether thing I think looks really exciting. And how often, like, is that something we saw in the demo? Is that something you're gonna see like frequently in the game? Are they special moments? Like, I guess I'm curious, like, how often you use that technique for gameplay. So the the Rift Tether has created these anomalies all throughout the galaxy. You'll encounter those pretty often. There's even a few more types of dimensional damage you'll encounter that we haven't shown yet. Now being Ooh. pulled between worlds. That's, that's localized to chasing after Dr. Nefarious in the demo. Um, and that's sort of reserved for special moments when you really have to, um, when, when the dimensional damage really tears wide open. Well, I gotta say, it looks incredible. And then at the end, we got another tease of uh, this female Lombax. Uh, I, I know you guys have confirmed she is playable in parts of the game. Uh, I think everyone wants to know though, do we have a name for her? Uh, I mean, the world is more interesting with mysteries, and we're going to have to keep this one uh, a little longer. Do, do we get a number of letters in her name or anything? <laughs> Too many smart people on the internet. They'll, get, they'll okay. figure it out right away. She's not named Abby, though, right? <laughs> All right, well, we'll have to <laughs> wait and see what you guys have in store for us. I gotta say, I mean, it looks incredible. The Ratchet games are always so much fun. And as you said, when you think of the power of SSD and the DualSense all coming together, uh, it looks really exciting. Before we go though, uh, I think everyone around the world wants to know when we're gonna get to play this game. Anything you can share with us on where you're at in development right now? 
Mike. <laughs> Mike? <laughs> So Ratchet and Clank is coming out in the PS5 launch window. So Ooh. we haven't announced a release, a specific release date yet. So stay tuned for that. What kind of window? Is it big window? So no, I'm just kidding. All right, that's all <laughs> we're gonna get, I'm sure. Ratchet and Clank <laughs> ripped apart, coming in the launch window for PlayStation 5. I gotta say, uh, Insomniac, uh, we're so excited about what you guys are doing across PlayStation, and uh, the game looks incredible. So thank you so much for all you've done, and we look forward to seeing more of uh, Rift Apart soon. Thanks, Jeff. Take care. All right, Marcus and Mike yes. from Insomniac, thanks, thanks, thanks for showing us that first look at Ratchet & Clank or PlayStation 5. And that's going to do it for Opening Night Live. Thank you so much for watching from around the world, and make sure to stay tuned all weekend for more live Gamescom coverage at Gamescom.global. As for us, we'll see you later this year. For the Game Awards 2020, our team is hard at work to build a very special live show for you coming in December. We'll see you then. Good night. That's crazy, y'all. Ratchet and Clank is coming out on la in launch window. So that means it's going to be any time between November all the way to December. It's going to be any time this year. That is crazy. This is what people have been waiting for. And 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 normally, normally when they have demos out, like they, they say there are a lot of people who use the demo, play the demo. Normally when the demos is out, that means the game is nearly ready. When they have demos in the game, it means the game is nearly ready. And just trying to fix a little simple bugs. This is one of the, the biggest things PS5 could do. So everybody thought it was going to come out next year or sometime, uh, you know, sometime. But this year, let's go. Like, comment, subscribe. This your boy, Rich Tyree. Peace out. Peace out.